we are back my friends with another property update video and today we're going to be running through the most important updates that you guys need to know so without wasting any of our times i'm going to be jumping straight into it and let's kick it off with some controversy because it's always fun to get people a little worked up we can't help everybody because it's too expensive the famous words from rishi rich okay mr millionaire and with inflation now looking to hit eight percent as the bank of england predicts petrol prices taking the absolute mick and the cost of living now becoming more stressful than ever mr rishi rish himself has put his hands up and said well he can't help everybody and to be honest i'm all for him getting a bit of stick now because i never really liked him i know some people were frothing at the mouth at some of the methods during the initial pandemic that he did and implemented however for someone to sit there and spout nonsense saying he has enormous sympathy for what people are going through to literally doing nothing to really actually help us i've got no problem in seeing his popularity fall however moving on before we all get stressed out onto something a little less controversial but may still raise a few eyebrows why building more houses won't actually solve the housing crisis issue interesting this interesting article which i'm about to share with you now spoke about one of the most important things the lack of supply now simple economics and i speak about this on every video of not having enough homes available and the demand being at an all-time high evidently leads to excessive competition for properties and as a result of this it sees house prices rising more than we can actually afford and of course more than we actually want so if we dive into this article ever so slightly the rationale behind it is that we should heavily tax already vacant properties something i did mention in a little shorts video over here so make sure you're checking those videos out as well guys however let's be honest new builds aren't always the preferred choice of home for many of us out there they're definitely not the types of homes i would purchase again to live in if i had the choice video over here if you are interested so simply following the concept of build 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 despite that not firstly being remotely feasible given the cost of materials and labor going through the roof we must ask ourselves if that will actually help is that going to solve the housing crisis alone however the article then dives deeper into looking at canada's approach more specifically vancouver who in 2017 heavily sanctioned an empty home tax charge of one percent of the property value for properties not occupied for at least six months of the year and in my opinion a fair proposal why are people just holding on to houses and not making them habitable and letting people either buy them or at the very least rent them out well the truthful answer is there's many reasons but applying a similar type of tax on these properties in my opinion would most likely see people actually do something with them such as either renting them out or of course moving them on for other people to potentially buy themselves and before anyone shouts in the comments although you're entitled to because every comment helps solving the empty homes shortage alone won't sadly solve the housing crisis but it could definitely pose a positive start to seeing things improve moving on we now have a financial times article written by robert armstrong who spoke about the housing market crashing before inflation now in his writing and he does look at the usa market predominantly he singles out that house prices and rents are extremely high and echoes some of my own thoughts about house builders struggling to get their houses built due to the constraints that they're under heck we're even struggling ourselves to build now a houses and flats due to some of the points that i mentioned earlier and of course the ever so speedy planning departments however back to this article his conclusion was that he felt that we are now seeing rates increase to potentially slow down the housing market and make the cost of borrowing less appealing however it may not be substantially enough to keep inflation under control and in my opinion i guess that's a fair analysis now segueing towards buy to let landlords who let's be honest who aren't the most liked people in the world they could now be set to see their tax bill rise by an extra percent on stamp duty as mr rishi rich yes he's back again is ready to increase stamp duty bills by a third now we already know in wales and scotland a surcharge of four percent is paid for second homeowners and if this comes into play here in england then this may prove to be a little bit of an issue for many people out there for starters it could could definitely see buy to let purchases considerably slow down but my biggest worry here is every time the government somehow chooses to blame landlords and tax them more for everything in order to claw back some of the money that they've been printing the cost often gets passed on to the renter who then in return ends up hating the landlord even more and in the midst of all this blaming and shouting life for the tenant and landlord has simply got harder but the government continues to have champagne parties and do as they please so it's going to be very interesting to see how this one plays out now moving on very swiftly we have a recent article speaking about the affordable housing and community land trusts that could be a potential solution for the housing crisis we are currently facing highlighting the fact that many people out there have no option but to turn towards a private rental sector where costs are obviously increasing it's leaving people 
frustrated at the lack of options. And the lady who wrote this article touched on some important stats where she states that homeowners stay on average 16 years in their home with social tenants staying for 11 years, whereas private renters, on the other hand, only stay for four years. And then she moves on to saying 29% of younger private renters, not sure how much younger, only end up staying for the year. And the real problem she was trying to convey in this article was that the continuous bouncing from place to place for private renters was causing a real lack of people bonding within those areas and a lack of community, ruining the social fabric. And as a result of this, urges community land trust as a way forward to helping towards affordable ownership. Now, in case you're wondering what the hell is this, well, how something like this would work is pretty straightforward. The community itself would be the landowners under this particular model, and they could dictate and set the prices of the homes that are built independent of the market forces out there. They can therefore build homes to their community's needs, from starter homes to new family homes to social rents for those that may be vulnerable. And this is a nice idea on the surface as she opts for houses to remain homes rather than speculative investments. A similar notion, I guess, to the right to buy scheme. Now, despite all this going on, the housing crash question is still too popular to not throw in to the property update videos and my titles and most likely my thumbnails as well. I always like to ask people what their views are on the property market. And I'm always hit with incredibly mixed reviews. Some of you think we will see a crash, others think prices will rise forever and ever, and some just simply have no idea or literally don't care. Because the truth is, nobody really knows. And all we can really do is look at the data we're presented with and try and make some educated guesses along the way about where we are potentially heading. However, an article from Halifax actually warns us of a housing correction to property prices. Having seen them rise by 0.5% in February, we can all agree it continues to defy economic conditions. And despite there being no unanimous decision on where the market is going, this quote, I'll quickly recite shares my actual personal thoughts. We are still expecting some correction in the market this year as the cost of living crisis finally reaches the property market and slows house prices down. Now, I'm not sure if it's gonna be this year, but I do share that sentiment. I mean, my car usually costs me 65 pounds a week to top up and today it costs me 82 pounds and shopping normally costs 50 pounds, but well, my shopping bill is now around 75 pounds a week. Now, granted, I brought some milkshake and I went organic on my apples, but come on, this really needs to stop now. Times are definitely getting difficult for every single one of us out there. And finally, my friends, an interesting article that I thought I'd share with you is about first time buyers payments towards their mortgages and the percentage that is from their take on pay. Now what I'll do is I'll share the document which I looked at and this sorts everything out into trades and while you ponder over that screenshot or just wait a few seconds until it disappears I'll also have another chart which shows the UK first time buyer mortgage payments as a percentage of their take on pay and next to this I'll put another image which separates this by region. And with that, my friends, for now, I just want to thank you for sticking around when you guys couldn't have been doing anything, but you chose to spend a few moments with me and that makes you pretty awesome. So until next time, my friends, thanks for watching.